right, so here we are again. Sold the really nice roller engine I did. So um, the Galaxy doesn't have an engine for it right now. And we're going to go ahead and get this engine all tore down and overhauled. And we're going to get that uh, thing back together for the autocross season again. So this is going to be another low, extreme low buck build. But if you followed my videos since 2013 or 2014 or so, um, you'd remember that this engine was in my old 74 F100. Anyway, it got to the point where it'd burn a quart of oil every 100 miles. So it, uh, it was pretty wore out, whether it be valve guides or rings. I got the engine for free. It was fuel injected. It's an 86 roller motor, and it was a, had 150,000 miles on it, went through a few demo derbies. Then I got it, and I put another 40, 50,000 miles on it, so it's seen some use in its day. But when I pulled it out, it still had 45 pounds of oil pressure, so um, the engine was decently taken care of. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get tearing into this thing and just see exactly how to tear down the small block Ford. All right, so there's quite a few ways you can start this, but since I'm doing a full tear down, I'm just going to start from the top down. So the first thing we're going to pull off is the intake manifold, and uh, it's pretty simple. You know, you see you got your bolts running around the outside of the intake manifold here, and just a half inch wrench will get all these loose, and we'll get this thing yanked off of here. All right, we got all 12 of our intake bolts off now, so she should pop right off. So I got this really nifty pry bar, but you could honestly use just a little chunk of wood or a um, two by four, but a good place right here for some leverage is right off the timing cover, right under the snout of the intake, and you just give it a nice little bump. A nice little bump. There we go. And it's off. So we'll get this thing pulled off and continue on. And away she goes. Take a quick peek in there. Um, like I said, the engine's always been pretty well cared for. You can see there's no gunk buildup or anything. You know, there's a little oil varnish, but um, the engine's from 86, so that's to be expected. But overall, looks pretty clean inside so far. All right, so the next step, working from the top down, I'm going to pull these heads off. And there's head bolts under the valve covers, so they have to come off. So that's pretty self-explanatory. The valve cover bolts are going to come off there. Uh, most of the time, there isn't gasket sealer on both sides of the valve cover gaskets, which I do not have. But if you got an engine and someone had done that, um, what you can do is just get one of these scrapers and put it in here and tap it around with a hammer and break that seal. You don't want to go going in with a screwdriver and prying on it because you'll end up bending your valve covers. And if you want to use them again, they'll be pretty much leaky junk after that. Now with all the bolts out, you should be able to get your valve cover off. And if they're a little sticky, you can just come in here and give them a few taps. They'll usually come loose. So just run your fingers along here and keep all your gasket to one side. All right, so now we're down to the long block. Taking a look at, um, you probably can't see in there too well, but I can see them pretty good. All the valve guide seals look decent even though i'm sure they're hard and petrified but they're all there and intact all right so i got one head off here and i don't want to um, give away what's going on with the engine beforehand here but i'm going to go over really quick how to take the cylinder head bolts out and just yank the head off. So you don't have to loosen any of your 
uh, rocker arms if you don't want to because if when these springs are compressed from the engine it's actually going to help us um, break the head loose from the engine if we're lucky when we get these head bolts loose it's actually going to pop up a little bit that's about best case scenario where we don't have to pry on anything um, if you do have to pry usually you can go in here and pry off of um, one of these oil passages again with a piece of wood and just pry up on the head and it usually pops right off so anyway, with removing the head bolts, we're just going to um, go in a circular pattern. So just work outside to in, real simple, no exact pattern really. I mean, you can do the cross pattern, just want to um, finish at the center and then we'll get it lifted off. We'll be careful not to mess up all our push rods when we do that. And um, we'll see what this engine looks like. Alright, so now that you have your head loose, you can see it's just free floating in here. We're going to go ahead and lift our head straight up so we don't run any risk of damaging or bending our push rods. So, you can get in here with your fingers under. And some of them, you know, they're going to drop, but can't hurt those, they're hardened. Just don't step on them. There you go, your heads are off. All right, so let's take a look at her. And just as I thought, you know, the cylinder rings have failed or are pretty worn out. It's hard to say until we get the piston out entirely. Um, if you look down in the bore, you can still see the cross hatching in this engine. Ooh, got some interesting wear there where the ring might have failed on that piston. This side looks pretty good. There's no cylinder lips at all. So you take care of your engines, they'll last a long time, obviously. So all in all, that looks pretty good. So far, it looks like it's going to uh, hone up and re-ring. My only main concern is this cylinder. I can't feel this with my finger, so it's not that bad of a scrape, apparently. But um, obviously, something went awry inside of that cylinder. Um, let's get all our roller rockers out and our hold down out. This is a roller engine, so that's pretty nice. So anyway, this is pretty simple. We'll just take these two bolts out. The spider comes off and the dog bones will come off right here. They're just held down by the spring tension here. And then all our lifters will come right out. So pretty simple. I'm not going to reuse this camshaft, so I'm not really concerned with keeping the lifters with the specific cam lobes. But um, also, when you have a roller cam in general, uh, it's not. It doesn't matter if you pull the lifters out and put them back in, and you also don't have to break in a roller cam. So um, they're a lot more forgiving than flat tappet, obviously. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and turn the engine over and pull the oil pan off. So it's always a good idea to have something to catch the coolant. Notice I got cardboard down so we don't make a complete mess in the garage. Always a good idea. But um, anyway, we're gonna turn our engine over here and it's gonna drain the coolant out of the block. And it's pretty hard to catch, but you just, you just try and catch most of it. You're gonna make a mess usually. You can do this outside, but the EPA is going to come down on you pretty good. So, we're going to keep turning it over here and you just try and catch what you can. You see it's, it gets to be kind of a mess no matter what you do. This is usually the messiest part of the whole ordeal. So, just turn it over slowly. 
inch by inch or so, let all the fluids drain out before you just wing it over and just all dumps all over. You can catch more that way. So anyway, I'm going to slowly get this engine turned over. All the fluids ran out of it. Um, obviously, you want to drain your oil before you ever even start this process. But uh, anyway, and we'll just go from there. All right, we got the engine flipped over now, and again, the pan off is pretty simple and straightforward. You uh, just use your 7 16 socket and get all these little bolts around the edges, and then on the four corners here in front and back, it's a half inch socket. So I'm gonna get all these broke loose and we'll pull this pan off. Dog, what are you doing, dog? This is no place for dogs. Come on now. All right, so once you get all your pan bolts out here, um, your oil pan should be loose enough to get off. And as you see here, you know, it's still on here pretty tight. And just like the valve covers, we're just going to go ahead and speed on it a little bit. And just like that, off she comes and there you go. So, still looking pretty darn clean after all this time. All right, so taking a look down inside this thing, still looks pretty darn clean. There's not a lot of sludge buildup, if any. Um, you got a little bit of burnt oil in there, but again, um, with an engine that age, that's to be expected. So, not too bad. Timing chain still pretty tight. So, she's in pretty good shape. Again, she'll make a tremendous candidate for an overhaul job. All right, so here we go. Time to get our harmonic balancer off. You need to rent one of these harmonic balancer pullers from your local auto parts store. And again, you rent that, you can return it. So um, anyway, usually you wanna have three points of contact, but this is a weird harmonic balancer. And uh, I only have two points, so I'm gonna make sure it's even at least. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this long rod and we're gonna thread this on here. And they give you this little nipple, and that needs to go on there, or else you will mess up your threads for your crank pulley. So you also want to make sure that your, um, excuse me, your crank pulley bolt. You also want to make sure that your crank pulley bolt is out, because if it isn't, you know you really can't pull a harmonic balancer off, um, because this will be holding it on. So you need to make sure that you have that off first. So anyway, we're gonna thread this down on here, and we should be good to go. Um, a lot of people have uh, universal pullers on hand, but uh, these harmonic balancer pullers make this job just so much easier. So anyway, once that's on, you're going to just continue to tighten that, and as you tighten that down, it's going to draw the harmonic balancer off. And again, you want to make sure that everything's working in a nice linear direction, and she should pull right off. But anyway, so this is off, and it looks like our rubber is pretty good. I don't see any cracks in it whatsoever, so we can go ahead and reuse this harmonic balancer. I didn't have any vibrations in the engine back in the day either, so um, this is probably in good shape. So anyway, we're going to now pull our water pump and our timing cover, and we can do this because our balancer's off. All right, I generally like to, uh, when I'm doing a full engine tear down, is pull the water pump and the timing cover off together. So to do this, it's only a few bolts. You're going to take these two out here, these two out here, and if you look close, they're on either side of the coolant passage. You have two up here on your timing cover, um, two down here on your timing tab, and two over here opposing your timing tab. And uh, you have all these loose, and you should be able to pull this baby right off. All right, so away we go. Usually it's pretty tight on there, so as you can see, the water pump um, being on there still really helped out. The water pump itself is still in really good shape. There's no play in the shaft, so um, it's pretty likely that that's going to get repainted and wind up back on there. But, uh, alright, taking a look in here, I must have uh, 
had this engine apart before. I don't remember, it would have been back in 2008 or so, um, but I see it has a different timing chain on it. So back in the 80s, they had those plastic timing chains. So um, it's worn a little bit. Um, whenever I'm here, I'm always just gonna put a new timing chain on for 50 or 60 bucks. But anyway, looks pretty good in there so far. Okay, well while we're here, we might as well just go ahead and pull the timing chain off. Um, it's just one bolt, a 9 16 wrench here, and uh, break that loose and get that out, and that um, both the gears and the chain will just slide right off. So, pretty simple. And you'll just wiggle her back and forth, and eventually, just like so, she'll come right off. Some nice wall art there. That won't be uh, going back on the engine for sure. All right, now I'm gonna pull the oil pump off and um, just take a look at what I did back when I was in high school. Apparently I thought these bolts could walk themselves out. So I drilled a hole through them and then I, I wired them so that they couldn't back themselves out. So that's, that's some pretty interesting stuff there, but uh, Anyway, basically, you pull these two bolts off and the oil pump comes out. Um, you have your distributor drive shaft that's going to be uh, um, right under your pump. And it's what drives your pump. So anyway, um, we're going to pull that out make sure we don't lose that shaft. You can also take off your pickup. So I'm just going to do that later. Keep everything together so I don't lose it. Um, this is one of those items that when you have your engine apart, it's always a good idea to just go ahead and replace your oil pump. Um, you know, it's easy to get to. Replace it with a quality pump and you'll be just fine. and just like that up and away goes the pump there's your oil pump drive shaft that's driven by your distributor so there you go you got that out and we can move on